The review was a frenzy in the early 70s were effusive in what they were saying, not about Hitchcock, the master of suspense, but Hitchcock, the artist of anxiety. The word artist crops up in a significant number of reviews. What's that round her neck? Looks like a tie. Yes, it's a tie, all right. Another necktie murder. Yes. <laughs> well, we haven't had a good juicy series of sex murders since Christie, and they're so good for the tourist trade. I was privileged to see Frenzy with Alma, just the two of us. It started out with us, and then he sort of left the projection room. And when it was over, and I realized he'd come back, because that's an awfully good picture, I jumped up and turned around to Alma and said, it's the picture of a young man. And she was weeping. Hitchcock was a filmmaker. His whole life was making movies. That's what he lived for. I think it's, it's an old fireman, you know? He, uh, if there's a fire, you fight it. And you, you do that right up to the time you die. At the age of 75, he made Family Plot. When asked at a press conference when he might consider retiring, he replied dryly, after Reel 12. I think he was a little sad that he wasn't respected more in his time. When they came to give him the Thalberg Award, he said, well, they must think I'm going to die soon if they're going to give me an award. I think he felt very much an outsider. And, you know, when he got the special Oscar or the Irving Thalberg Award, he, all he said was, thank you, and walked off. Everybody thought it was very funny. It wasn't funny. It was Hitch. It was, that's all he had to say. You know, it was like, finally, thanks. But in the end, Hollywood recognized the enormous impact of Alfred Hitchcock, his films, and his legacy. A year before he died, the American Film Institute paid homage. I beg permission to mention by name only four people who have given me the most affection, appreciation, and encouragement, and constant collaboration. The first of the four is a film editor. The second is a scriptwriter. The third is the mother of my daughter, Pat. And the fourth is as fine a cook as ever performed miracles in a domestic kitchen. And their names are Alma Revel. The last time I met him was much, much later. And he was really old and he was in a wheelchair and had just recently been belatedly knighted by the Queen. And I think Alma had just had a stroke. And uh, he, he was lonely. And uh, that was the last time I saw him. And I'm very, very glad I did, because he died a few weeks later. Hitchcock did what he did and created these works, and they are as meaningful today as they, as they were then. And in a way, they have a special resonance now because they're a window on that time period. He was a complex artist who made commercial pictures that were also deeply personal. This was a talent that just exuded from him that he wasn't even aware of that was coming across. He so often said, it's only a movie. And yet he had this power. It, it's very difficult for critics, for people in general, to take serious what you're doing if you're doing something that is popularly entertaining and is about these subjects that we'd rather not think as part of decent human behavior. 
And I think Hitchcock uh, was painted with that brush uh, to a certain extent by Hollywood, by the community of critics and uh, people that judge what's art and what's not. Because he was so entertaining, because he was so transparently uh, fun, it was easy to miss the fact that he was dealing about something that was quite profound in a way. It seemed like there was never a time when he wasn't making movies. I know there was, but there seemed like a time set aside for him. I almost had the feeling at times that he was supposed to be there making movies during this period of this particular century. I mean, what if he had been born 30, 40 years earlier? Think of what we would have lost. Now daddies and mommies, I think the time has come to lamb out of here. Suppose you take this opportunity to escape. Until next time, of course.